There is a great new book out that examines the history of fascism, and you may be surprised by the facts. I can't tell you. It's probably the first book that I have taken and went and looked for second sources myself because I was just jaw-dropped shocked that I didn't know these facts. I figured they've got to be untrue. Too often the word fascist gets thrown at conservatives, but as it turns out, according to Jonah Goldberg and, oh, I don't know, the facts, the real face of fascism is liberal. The book is called Liberal Fascism. Its author is Jonah Goldberg. Um, Jonah, uh, first of all, the thing that really hacks me off about the book is I want to throw it across the room so many times <laughs> because you keep trying to make the point that I'm not calling liberals Nazis. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, about here, I'm like, I get it. Right, right. But still, I have asked liberals, have you, would you read this book? Have you ever read this book? Just because of the cover, yeah. they say no. Yeah, yeah. Why the smiley face with the Hitler mustache? What does it mean? Um, well, and I agree with you. And, and reviewers, critical reviewers, have said that I keep calling liberals Nazis, and I yeah. don't do that. I mean, I must say it at least 50 times. Oh, I, I can't. And I know, <laughs> but, but, but apparently they're impervious to it, so maybe I shouldn't yeah. bother. Anyway, the smiley face thing, um, it, it's explained on page one or maybe two of the book, and it's a... Uh, reference to an exchange between Bill Maher and George Carlin on the, his, uh, Bill Maher's television show, where George Carlin says that, look, if fascism ever comes to America, it's not going to be in jack boots and uniforms. It's going to be happy fascism, smiley fascism. When he said this, because I, I, I read this, when he said this, did he know what he was saying? No, Did he I, know? I don't think really, but he gets at a core insight, which I think he's right about, right. which is simply this. Fascism is popular. We have trained ourselves in, in America because the left has so controlled fascism to define it as anything they don't like. I mean, you know this from talk radio. The, the best definition for a fascist in America is a conservative who's, who's winning an argument. Right. Um, but the real lesson of history is that fascism, fascism is popular. That's why it's dangerous. Right. You know, if, if it was only evil mustache-twisting villains with, you know, British accents from World War II movies, who cares? But it turns out that, you know, the reason it appealed to people is that it's appealing. And that's the, that's the point of the, the, the cover, is to, is to point out that the things that we like may be fascist. It's very easy to say we'll never be fascist if you only point to evil but things see, in death camps. Everybody has, everybody has defined, and it's actually a redefinition of the word fascism, everyone has defined fascism as Adolf Hitler. Right. And one of the things that, uh, I mean, it's just been an amazing journey, um, looking at fascism, the history of it, uh, Mussolini was extraordinarily popular mm -hmm. here in the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, Hitler was actually a vegetarian, right. wanted to take and, and spread the glories of vegetarianism and saying, you know, it's good for everybody, we should eat this. It's the same kind of things that we're dealing with now here in America in many ways. What's good for you is just forced upon you. A famous Hitler youth slogan was, nutrition's not a private matter. You know, it was the idea that what you wanted to eat, that wasn't up to you anymore. It was up to the government. And we're finding that in all sorts of, you know, there's a reason why we talk about food fascists. Right. You know, these people who want to get rid of trans fats want to sort of determine what you eat because, um, because the more socialized medicine we have, the more rationale they think they have to determine what you can eat, what you can put in your body. And in terms of Mussolini's popularity in the United States, it is almost exactly like the popularity that we've seen Fidel Castro enjoy on the left for the last 35, 40 years, mm -hmm. and that we now see Hugo Chavez enjoy. He, and they were the exact same kinds of guys. They were nationalist socialists. Mussolini was this guy who was a national socialist, and he appealed to the same segments of society that today still get, you know, these full-blown crushes on people like Hugo Chavez. There's two things that come to mind, uh, and the first one is, and, and maybe you can comment on this, when people try to shut you down by calling you a fascist, doesn't that make them more of a fascist, no matter what I'm saying? Right, there's a weird catch-22. Uh, because the use of the word fascist in American political culture is essentially 
It's a way to silence people. It's a cudgel. It's a way to shut someone up. Oh, he's a fascist. When Al Gore says his critics on the web are digital brown shirts, when he says people who disagree with him on global warming are like Holocaust deniers, it's his way of saying, oh, you don't have to listen to these people. They're crazy. They're illegitimate. They're evil. They're bad. They're fascists. And so in that sense, whether you want to call it fascism or not, it's certainly undemocratic to simply demonize anyone who dissents from the popular conventional view that people like Al Gore are putting out. You know, if, when you call them a fascist, you're basically what you're doing is you're saying we don't have to listen to them anymore. And <clears throat> the other thing that, it, that uh, shocks me is that so many people on the left, they hate corporations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hate them. And yet they are fine with corporations as long as they're doing good. And it goes back to this. You make all kinds of special exceptions. You'll do, you won't notice things that corporations are doing as long as it's happy, as right. long as it's for global warming, right. for, uh, for example. Where does that split come? It's funny. I mean, the, the, the reaction from the left whenever corporations do bad things is say, okay, we need more regulation of corpula corpora corporations. And then the reaction from corporations is, okay, well, if you're going to regulate me, I'm going to get more involved in the crafting of the regulations that affect me. And so government and corporations get in bed together. The right wing, i.e. free market response, is to keep government and business as far apart as possible, let businesses fail in the free market when they need to, not, re use, go not use corporations as government by proxy for health care and that kind of thing. Name of the book, Liberal Fascism. Back in a second. Since time is so short on TV, I've asked Jonah to write a special series of reports exclusively for subscribers to my free email newsletter. If you sign up right now at glennbeck.com, you will get a column from Jonah each day this week, starting with tomorrow's, called The Facts Your Liberal Friends Need to Hear. Again, that's our email newsletter subscribers only. It is free. You can sign up right now at glennbeck.com.